x 20x 100x if you want to make it big in the crypto markets definitely need to have actionable insights and also be able to make data driven decisions there are different metrics that you can use to make sure that you can get an edge when uh, trying to look at the overall picture that informs the way you invest or trade this is what i'll be talking about today in this video so i'll be pretty much giving you a rundown of uh, how to understand a kind of a, the derivatives a market for example looking at that market data things like open interest funding rates uh, liquidations and uh, just exchange flows tracking wallets and uh, a whole lot of things that uh, come into um, consideration for you to really put money on the line a lot of people just make decisions on a willy-nilly basis and usually that is why people do not make money in the cryptocurrency markets if you like the kind of content we do here make sure you hit that like and subscribe okay so i'm not going to waste any time just going to dive right into everything that i want to talk about today when we leverage actionable insights as a market participant obviously in crypto it's easier to kind of navigate uh the digital asset markets obviously with a lot more confidence so when we look at derivatives especially especially when we're looking at Bitcoin derivatives, uh, you can get a lot of uh, on-chain metrics that can help you kind of uh, make better decisions. For example, open interest or funding rates, like I said. Uh, so uh, when you want to gauge the market commitment, you look at things like open interest, which uh, just kind of refers to the number of active contracts in the futures market. Okay, so this signals uh, liquidity and also the level of market activity. When you see an increase in open interest this typically suggests that you know there is greater interest from both buyers and sellers which can kind of correlate with uh, increased uh, volatility as well so if you're a trader often a rising uh, open interest uh, as a sign of market momentum uh, you can kind of use it to support uh, ongoing price trends for example if you see a sharp decline in open interest, this may indicate that positions are being closed, uh, setting the stage for a potential long or short squeeze or a sudden dramatic price shift that causes mass liquidations of uh, leveraged positions. So uh, a lot of people don't tend to look at these things. So, for example, if you imagine a scenario where Bitcoin's price kind of shoots up rapidly while open interest remains high this can actually signal that traders are maintaining positions uh, that's also reinforcing that uh, bullish trend conversely when you see a decrease in open interest during the uh, price rally this might hint at traders now starting to take profits which can lead to a uh, reversal you also need to think about things like funding rates which is uh, pretty much uh, more of a sentiment barometer because in the perpetual futures contracts uh, market this reveals the balance between long and short positions right so a positive funding rate indicates that uh, longs who are buyers are paying short sellers uh, suggesting that the sentiment is bullish at the, at the time and obviously on the other side negative funding rates means that shorts are paying longs often showing that the market is turning bearish Monitoring those funding rates helps you as a trader to also assess kind of the sentiment of the market, engage the potential for corrections or kind of continuous trends uh, if you want to ride one. Okay, so you can consider a market where Bitcoin funding rates, for example, turns negative for several hours. Uh, this could indicate that traders are expecting a downward price movement, even though the spot price remains stable. So which kind of signals you can take to kind of uh, prepare for a potential drop or adjust your positions to just kind of uh, mitigate your risks there. Liquidation is also another thing you need to think about. This kind of occurs obviously if you're uh, leveraged and you're forced to close your position uh, due to insufficient margin. When you look at the volatility there, large scale liquidations often kind of lead to a cascading price movement, right? Long liquidations can tri trigger these uh, price drops that really range while short liquidations can spark a sudden price spike as well 
keeping an eye on those liquidation data uh, or data feeds uh, can allow you as a trader to anticipate uh, short term volatility and also adjust your strategies accordingly. So, for example, you think about a scenario where, uh, say, the price of Bitcoin drops 5% in a short period, triggering 20 million worth of long liquidations. This sudden sell off might lead to a deeper decline or uh, li liquidation cascading, uh, driving prices lower and traders kind of uh, try to monitor the liquidation uh, data to identify these critical moments and adjust positions to avoid losses as well and also capitalize on that volatility, right? Another thing to look out for is uh, the exchange flows, just tracking investor behavior, exchange reserves, inflows and outflows. These are all powerful indicators of market behavior. When large amounts of Bitcoin are moved to exchanges, uh, it often signals an intent, obviously, to sell, leading to uh, also an increased amount of pressure. And uh, when assets flow out of exchanges, uh, it suggests that investors are withdrawing their holdings for long term storage, reducing selling pressure and potentially signaling bullish sentiment. So when you look at the uh, volatility predictors, the difference between exchange inflows and outflows, um, you're obviously looking at these are uh, useful predictors of market volatility, uh, positive net flow or more assets entering exchanges than living, often correlating with increased uh, selling pressure, uh, potentially obviously leading to price declines. And uh, when you see negative net flows, more assets leaving exchanges, suggesting obviously people are accumulating reducing pressure on exchanges and indicating that the trend could be bullish. So, for example, if you see a, a significant amount of Bitcoin moved from cold wallets to exchanges during a price rally, it might mean that large holders or whales are starting to sell. This sudden shift can also affect uh, market sentiment and uh, uh, can cause uh, uh, further uh, downward pressure as well. So, whale activity, definitely something to look out for large transactions. There's a lot of accounts and Twitter that track these large whales uh, for significant holdings, uh, kind of signaling price movements as well. The exchange whale ratio, uh, which kind of uh, measures the ratio uh, of the top 10 inflows to the total inflows on an exchange uh, reveals kind of the extent of whale influence on price action. Of course, when you see high whale activity, particularly on exchanges, this often precedes uh, large price movements, okay? So as these players have the power and the liquidity, they are able to move the sentiment as well. So imagine when you see a surge in whale ratio just before a Bitcoin try, uh, price drop, you can think that this can suggest that people are offloading holdings, anticipating a downturn and survey traders are able to capitalize on that. And then there's also some other behavioral patterns, long-term and short-term holders, for example, coin days, um, destroyed CDDs. Uh, you've got spent output profit ratios as well, which are powerful tools for understanding kind of just the behavior of long-term and short-term holders, right? So a CDD uh, measures the movement of uh, a long-term held uh, Bitcoin, giving insight into when seasoned investors are selling and high values also often indicate that long term holders are now starting to cash out, which can signal an upcoming price decline. So on the other hand, SOPR as well measures the profit of coins moved on chain. Uh, a value of uh, one indicates that obviously investors are selling at a profit, while the value below one suggests they are selling at a loss, which is a metric that if you're an investor, you understand the prevailing market sentiment, you can see whether the market is optimistic or uh, pessimistic in that scenario. For, for example, uh, let's say it stays above one, it suggests that the healthy uh, market environment uh, is there and traders are confident and realizing profits. When you see that dipping below one, it might indicate obviously panic selling and obviously looking at uh, a market bottom there. So combining all of these type of insights kind of just uh, gives you an edge by synthesizing multiple data points into uh, something of a coherent strategy. You can uh, use open interest funding rates, exchange flows, whale activity, SOPR, and uh, just investors uh, and traders can uh, utilize all of these to kind of give themselves that holistic uh, view on the market. And also just taking a data-driven approach to trading and uh, managing your risk and 
uh, kind of approaching capital in the markets is very, very important. So this is uh, some of the things that you need to look out for. Make sure you check out the link down below with the full uh, article on our main site so you can go and look out for some of these things and start making smarter decisions. Don't forget to check out the links to my favorite exchanges. Download my book, DeFi Millionaire. Like, share, subscribe, turn on the notifications. Peace. Thank you.